Loops are one of the most common structures in programming. And for loops are going to be something you've probably used in other languages. If not, they're going to be something you'll be become very familiar with. So let's assume we have a list of values. And these values are maybe integers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can iterate over these or perform various different operations of them pretty easily. The first thing you can do is just iterate over the list. So you can say for number and values print line number. And what this is, it says for every value that's inside of here, we're going to give it a variable called number and we want to print that number. And if we run this, we'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is printed. So now I can call this something else. This doesn't have to be called number. Uh, this could be called uh, chicken. I mean, just for whatever, just for purposes of demonstration, this can be anything you want it to be. It's going to print the value. And this is each value that's in this list will be put inside of here. So the same thing goes for these primitive values uh, as of, you know, it could be names. It could be anything of that nature. And then again, I'm going to change this from chicken because it doesn't make sense. But to name, we'll run it again. We'll see Don, Bob, Jane. So that, that's each one of those values in that list. And that's how we can kind of iterate quickly over a list using a for loop. Now there's also ways you can do it if you want to do some type of counting. For example, if we wanted to say for i and 0 until 10, we could print the letter i. Now we're used to seeing i as a counter variable in very, very many languages. And you'll see here what's happening is i is defined as an integer. Uh, in 0 until 10. So it says starts at 0 up until we hit 10, we want to do something. So each time it's just going to iterate and increment the variable value by 1. So we have 0 through 10 down here. Now there's also another thing you can do. So that's a very common way to do some looping. And you can set this as a variable up here. So because that val say, you know, upper limit is 10. And so you can say until upper limit. So, or, you know, you could say, Here's another word, you stop, right? So stop. And then you can make another one called start. So there's all different types of ways that you can do this in your code. And it's up to you, depending on the situation, for I and start until stop. I mean, it doesn't really make sense because then I have to go find what start and stop means, but as just, just a demonstration that you can run this and it'll still execute accordingly. So I'm gonna undo this here. And we're gonna go back to how it was before, to until 10. Now you can also perform stepping. So what, I can, what this says is for i in 0 to 10, I want you to step by 2. What that means is basically count by 2 as we're iterating. So instead of incrementing by 1, increment by 2. So therefore, you see 2, 4, 6, 8. So if I were to jump this up to, you know, let's go to 100. We're going to see it's going to count by 2s all the way up until 100. And there it is down here at the bottom. Now I could say step 10, and that's going to iterate all the way up to 100. So we're going to see starting at 0 all the way up until 100. And if I were to do step 5, of course, it's just going to run it till it's 5, and then it'll iterate upwards. Now you can also do it the opposite way. So let's go down to the step. Let's get rid of the step again. So we have i in 100 down to 0. So this will be basically a reverse for loop. So it's going to count from 100 down to 0, and it's going to increment by 1 by default. Now, again, I could do step 2 here, and that's going to count down by 2. Or I could do step 10. And then we're going to have 100 all the way down to 10 to 0. So as we can see here, 100 all the way down to 0. So when we're step by 10. Now, the last thing you could have possibly is let's take, you, let's take a simple class like a... Um, Let's create a quick, quick data class called person. And this person, of course, is going to have a name, which is a string. And let's create a couple people up here. So we'll say val people equals list of, we'll say person, Don, person, Jane, person, Karthik. And then what we'll do inside of here, We'll say for i in people, we're going to print the people. And so you can iterate over objects as well. 
So here we're iterating over each item in a list, just using a simple for loop inside of Kotlin. And that's how you can use a for loop in Kotlin.